Hello there, my fellow monster hunters, and welcome back to our lore series focusing on the mythical creatures and monsters of the world. Today, I figured I would tackle a more straightforward type of beast, which is not as ambivalent when it comes to good or evil. Nevertheless, it is a very famous monster with a good amount of interesting lore behind it. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Basilisk. I would tell you to avert your eyes and not get turned to stone, but you're already watching. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? A basilisk is a chimeric monster, born from a toad or serpent egg incubated under a cockerel. Or at least so the legend says. The terrible offspring that hatches from this egg is half bird, half snake, and all evil. It is also one of the most deadliest creatures in all of mythology, and it is very hostile towards humanity and pretty much any other living thing. The word basilisk itself, in English, stems from the Greek basilikos, which translates roughly as a kinglet, a kind of serpent. In Latin, the creature is basiliscus, and in French it is basilic, both of which eventually influenced the English version of the word basilisk. The etymology of the word cockatrice, which is very often associated with the basilisk itself, is a bit more convoluted. It appears in many classical and early languages of Europe, with the old French cocatre adopted into Middle English as cockatrice, and eventually evolved into cockatrice. Although the two may not be mutually exclusive, they are both used to describe, if not the exact same creature, then two creatures which are very similar to each other. There are three main descriptions of the mythical basilisk, as a huge lizard, as a giant snake, or a composite of a reptile and a rooster, with the head, the plumage and front legs of a rooster, and the tail of a reptile and also sometimes scaly wings. These wings are often also used to describe the cockatrice. The horrific body of a basilisk is patched together from pieces of a dragon, a serpent, and a cockerel. It has the cockerel's flashy feathered head and is supported by two spindly chicken legs. Dragon wings can erupt from its shoulders, and a long serpentine tail completes its shudder-worthy look. Although this chimera is a deadly enemy of humanity, it can also be very small. The earliest accounts of the monster describe it as being only around 12 inches long. Alternatively, the basilisk is often described as a giant snake, without the cockerel head or wings. Still, its movement is unlike that of other snakes, and rather than slithering with its stomach on the ground, it crawls forward with its front half of the body towering above the earth. The snake-like version of the basilisk often reaches gigantic proportions. It is for good reason that the basilisk is one of the most feared creatures in all of mythology. It can kill or injure a man in five different ways, and most of them don't even involve the creature getting into the fight. The monster's most deadly and famous weapon is its dreaded gaze. The potency of its gaze is discussed in all the myths that relate to it, across several different cultures even. No matter when, where, or who you are, if you meet the eyes of the basilisk, you are done for. Second to the monster gaze is the putrid breath. This is said to be so terrible that it can wither plants and incapacitate a grown man. Some scholars even say that the monster can spout fire. The third weapon of the monster is its terrible venom. This is so toxic it can even kill a man from a meter away. In one story, the venom traveled up a warrior's spear after he stabbed a basilisk, and it was so strong that it killed both the warrior and the horse upon contact. As a fourth weapon, the monster can use its sinister half-bird, half-reptilian hissing to madden, paralyze, or simply kill a man. Finally, touching one of the creatures is the fifth deadly weapon. Even if you are not exposed to its gaze, its breath, its venom, or its hissing, you can still get killed by simply touching it. Of course, the basilisk doesn't use all this weaponry to kill just men. The monster leaves a path of destruction wherever it goes. 
the plants are scorched by its stench and evil spirit, and the birds burst into flame if they get too close to it. Even other snakes flee from it, knowing that this particular monster has a bit of a cannibalistic appetite. Your best chance of surviving an encounter with a basilisk is avoiding the encounter altogether. Fortunately, they are not invincible, and if you really have to, you can take one on. Weasels and cocks are said to be worthy opponents to these terrible chimeras. Weasels are said to be immune to their fatal glance, and they can even survive a venomous bite if they get taken care of afterwards. Many folklore texts urge the basilisk killers to throw a weasel into the beast's den, or vice versa, throw a basilisk into a den of weasels, and then let them fight. The sound of a cock's crow can also reduce the monster to ash, bizarrely. So all you gotta do is find the nearest rooster and weaponize it. If you do find itself in the presence of one of the basilisks, there is one weapon that can save you, a mirror. Just as its gaze is lethal to all other living creatures, so too will the monster perish if it looks upon itself. There are stories told of Alexander the Great ordering a great mirror to be placed between his army and the basilisk that was defending a city. Upon seeing its own reflection, the monster died instantly. Similarly, Saint George held its shield so that the basilisk saw its own image, causing its death. Your best ally, though, is still the weasel, as this small creature is said to be immune to the deadly gaze and its venom. The basilisk is also a common ornament in large works of art, especially between the 14th and the 16th centuries. Although this small monster is rarely an artistic centerpiece, it can be found among other demons in the architectural molding of grand cathedrals or peeking out from the background of family crests. The power of the basilisk even stays with it after death. If the monster is reduced to ash, these ashes then retain magical properties that were supposedly highly sought after by alchemists in the Middle Ages. One legend describes an alchemist using the monster ashes to turn silver into gold, while other legends say that the ashes are an important part in the making of the Philosopher's Stone itself. Some have speculated that reports of cobras may have actually given birth to the stories of the monster basilisk. The cobra can maintain an upright posture, and with its inflated neck hood, makes it a very terrifying sight. The venom of the king cobra, which has a crown-like symbol on its head, is capable of killing a human with a single bite. In addition to their deadly bite, the Egyptian cobra can incapacitate even larger animals by spitting venom in their face. Also, the cobra is often killed by the mongoose. Now, the mongoose and the weasel are not exactly the same, but they are similar enough and they are both carnivorous mammals. One of the earliest accounts of the basilisk comes from Pliny the Elder's natural history. Here, he describes another creature called the Catoblepas, which is a monstrous cow-like creature. Pliny states, There is not one that looketh upon his eyes, but he dieth presently. Pliny also describes the basilisk as being quite similar to the Catoblepas, and I quote, It routes all snakes with its hiss, and does not move its body forward in manifold coils like the other snakes, but advancing with its middle raised high. It kills bushes not only by its touch, but also its breath, scorches up grass and bursts rocks. Its effect on other animals is disastrous. It is believed that once one was killed with a spear by a man on horseback, and the infection rising through the spear killed not only the rider, but also the horse. The basilisk has been appearing in literature for centuries. Geoffrey Chaucer featured a basilicock, as he called it, in his Canterbury Tales. William Shakespeare featured it in Richard III. In this play, the title character had a widow, who, upon hearing compliments to her eyes from her husband's murderer, retorts that she wishes they were a basilisk just to kill him. Poet Percy Shelley, in his Ode to Naples, alludes once again to the basilisk in the following stanza. Be thou like the imperial basilisk, killing thy foe with unapparent wounds. Gaze on oppression till at that dread risk, a gas she pass from the earth's disk. Fear not, but gaze, for freemen mightier grow, 
and slaves more feeble gazing on their foe. The look of a basilisk is also mentioned in Bram Stoker's Dracula, when the main character makes his first attempt at killing the Count. As far as symbolism is concerned, the basilisk usually represents evil, and it is a symbol of death. Christianity sometimes employed the symbol of the basilisk, as with a number of other serpents as well, immediately casting it as a demon or representative of the devil itself. Therefore, it was often depicted in church murals or stone carvings, often slain or defeated by Christian knights to symbolize the ability to overcome evil. The basilisk also became incorporated in heraldry, specifically in the town of Basel, Switzerland. Heraldic images blend the famous Bishop of Basel's coat of arms with the basilisk. This guy was forced out during the Protestant Reformation, and the basilisk was blamed for an earthquake in the city years before. In alchemy, the basilisk played dual roles. It could represent the powerfully destructive force of fire, which breaks down elements to allow transmutation of metal, or the immortalizing tonic produced by the Philosopher's Stone. Nowadays, the basilisk is still present in pop culture and encountered most prevalently in fantasy literature and video games. However, a strange thing about its representation is that its chimeric aspect is pretty much never used. Instead, it is almost always represented via the snake-ish model or the lizard-ish model, flying or otherwise. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the fearsome and sinuous basilisk for today. An interesting creature, both looks-wise, but especially in the amount of methods it can use to actually kill a person. I don't think I've ever read about a mythological creature with so many deadly attributes. Now, is the basilisk among your favorite mythological creatures? What do you like or dislike most about it? Do you know of any other stories or famous representations of it? Definitely let us know in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. And if you want to support this series in particular, please like, watch it and share it more than anything else. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. This is GDN signing out.